Presented by Private Internet Access. Welcome to another episode of We're All Satoshi. It's become mid-October 2017 already and I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. Visited today by Satoshi Nakamoto. Hey. Max Kodak, mm -hmm. you're one of the founders of LISC. This is quite an achievement you've accomplished in the past 18 months. It's so happy to have you here and hear a little bit more about how you got into this. What brought you into cryptocurrency? Yeah, thanks for this opportunity to talk more about myself, about LISC and where the future is going maybe for LISC, for blockchain in general. Um, so what brought me into cryptocurrencies and blockchain? Um, I always wanted to do something like electrical engineering, computer science, but also always I was very interested in finance, investment banking and so on. And then I read about Bitcoin and mm -hmm. I was like in love immediately because cool. it combined all areas instantly. Cool. When was this? Um, it was about four and a half years ago. So quite a long while ago, I saw like $50 Bitcoins once. Um, mm. Of course, I never bought at okay, this so, price. So 2012-ish, 2013? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I bought one Bitcoin back in the day, of course, at the all-time high, at the local one, um, for yeah. like 200 euros. Yeah, um, you always beat yourself and then realize, hey, maybe it wasn't such a bad deal after all. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I never sold it, of course. I kept it all away and I worked intensively in different communities and worked my way up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just fascinated by this thought of decentralization, of this thought of being independent of banks, independent of governments, um, and of course, all these technical aspects as well. I just found it very fascinating to be in these communities. Right. And now you have a half a billion do dollar market cap of this little project you started. How does yeah. that feel? Yeah, it feels quite great. I mean, it's not so little anymore. Um, it basically grew exponentially in the past months and it feels really amazing. Yeah, you had, let, let's return to what LISC is, but you had one big market cap in, in, increase in June and one in August. What, what mm. happened then? Mm, so I think it's a matter of being professional and a matter of delivering something and mm -hmm. being promising. And I think people just realize that we are here, that we are not running away, that we're using all funds accordingly to our foundation statu statute, um, that we are really developing a product and really want to give something back to the blockchain industry. I mean, by now we are over 20 people, all based here in Berlin, managed under the light curve GmbH. We have around, I think with the recent price increase in Bitcoin, about like 80, 90 mi million dollars in the foundation in Switzerland, mm. one of the countries who is really known to secure funds. Um, we're working together with best law agency in the world for ICOs, for cryptocurrencies in general. So I think people just saw that we are serious. And that, in my opinion, was like the reason for the first price increase. Um, on the second price increase, like I have a theory which might be partly the reason. So in Japan, some exchange added us and now they hold mm. like over 10, 11% of all LISC. These Japanese people, they're crazy for LISC. They bought up like $80 million worth of LISC. Wow. And I think that was also one of the reasons yeah. for a huge price increase up to I think $910 million market cap at an all-time high of list. Crazy. It, it is quite an increase. I mean, the, th the price for, per unit was at about $0.10 cents in March of this year, mm. and now it's hovering about $5 thereabouts, like peaked at 8 and something, I believe. Yeah, 8 something uh, at the peak. Currently, it's all going down right. due to recent, recent Bitcoin events. Right. Um, it's right. crazy. Uh, let's get back to those recent Bitcoin events. Mm. You were talking about how you were always interested in technology and how to apply that to the blockchain. Were you also tinkering with small computers like uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, mm. getting into that and uh, trying to connect that to... Yeah. So I studied electrical engineering uh -huh. um, and I bought immediately an Arduino. Never played around with it, but I had it, you know. Um, right. What I did a lot was playing around with the Raspberry Pi installing even like small um, mining pools on it. So not a miner, but a mining mm -hmm. pool. Um, also some cool tricks like showing prices on LEDs and so on, but not so much actually. Um, I was always more focused on the community aspects of cryptocurrencies right. back in the day, less on the like hardware technical side, even though um, it's pretty funny. 
I had a miner for Litecoin, not for Bitcoin. Mm. And this basically saved my ass back in the day <laughs> um, because I, I was working quite a lot for cryptocurrencies and I acquired quite a few Litecoins. Mm -hmm. But in Germany, it's like that. If you're a student and you're not having so much money, you get like a little bit of money from the government, which you only have to pay back like 50% of it. Okay. And it came super late, like three, four months delay. And I had mm. to sell off all this Litecoin at $3. But I had the miner and the miner had 40 Litecoins in it. Mm. And then the price showed up to $40 or so. And I kept it and sold it at the top basically. And this way I was still motivated to stay inside this community, you mm. know, and took my way from there. It was pretty lucky in my opinion. Well, in one way, I guess we're all lucky to just be at the right place at the right time and get to experience this. Yeah. But so now you're taking these Arduino projects and putting them right onto the community community instead. So you're commu so combining these small projects, but putting them directly onto the onto the blockchain or onto side chains. So, like I said, I really never played around a lot a lot with the Arduino itself. With the Raspberry, it was all was only in the very early times of my blockchain experience. Um, I was just more fascinated by blockchain itself than in my university and that means in like hardware um, experiments. Okay. Um, Did you drop out? Yes. I dropped out. I dropped That's out. That's not a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, uh, most, most really, really mm. way out there entrepreneurs looks like, look like they're dropouts just because they're these wild brains and don't really fit into a square shape, you know. I always say to the university, I was like in the library for 12 hours studying, mm. came home and then blockchain, you know. And <laughs> then like yeah. after a few semesters, I was like, fuck this shit. I, I hate the library. <laughs> Let's just make blockchain. And then I was like slacking off university. Um, but then I was 24, did LISC, raised 6 million euros nearly. And then I decided, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm done with the university. I mean, I have like three exams left and, and the bachelor thesis. And I would have my bachelor. I right, have and like for what? yes, for what? I mean, I have nine more years to do it. So maybe at one point I just do it, just for like I don't know why exactly. Um, maybe for my grandma because she always wanted it. <laughs> um, and being like the first um, academic on my German side of family, uh, maybe for that reason. But like now, the next year is only lisk, 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 definitely. Yeah, let's come back to that after the break. How you're getting into this and what we're building.